Hello, uh, I'm Paul Beckwith. So, this is a brainstorming session. Okay, I just did a video showing how the Arctic is on thin ice. Basically, we've got, if we've got first year ice, maybe two or three feet thick, it's floating in the ocean, okay, 10% of the ice roughly is above the surface of the water, 90% is below the surface, Right? So, what we have is we have a satellite up in the sky, and uh, so it's orbiting the Earth. It sends down microwaves to the water surface and measures a distance. It's a, basically a radar altimeter. And it also sends it down to the top of the ice, and it measures that distance. So, it calculates this number here, which is the freeboard. The freeboard. Okay? From the freeboard, if you know the density of the ice, it's first year ice, you've got a pretty good idea, or multi year ice or whatever, you can calculate what the ice thickness is here. Right? The thickness. Now, if you take all the different thicknesses of the ice across the whole Arctic Ocean, multiplied by the area, then you basically get the ice volume, the sea ice volume. Okay, the volume is the key number. This is the Cryosat 2 satellite. Now, it's, the picture is complicated a bit because there's, there's snow on the top of the ice. Okay? So the snow weighs down the ice a bit and it, you have to adjust your calculations. Okay? So what these Canucks did at the University of Calgary is they took data from 2005 to 2017, I believe, and uh, they took measurements of the amount of snow on the ice. They went into the Arctic Ocean at various points and they measured the, um, the characteristics of the snow on top of the ice, the thicknesses and so on. But also what happens is when you have first year ice forming, it re it rejects brine. The salinity of the normal ocean is about 35 PSU, practical salinity units, which is 3.5%. Okay, it's really a part per thousand number, 35. When the ice forms, there's brine pockets that are trapped inside the ice. The salinity might be 10 or 15 uh, PSU inside the ice. The rest of the brine is ejected on all surfaces because the ice forms fairly quickly. So you get brine, you get this brine ejected here and this brine gets into the snow and then it wicks up through the snow. Okay, the concentration of brine is the highest right next to the ice and it wicks up through the snow. So this changes the, the radar, the altimeter signal because microwaves, we know well how microwaves penetrate most of the reflection of the microwaves is at the interface of the snow and ice in the normal situation. But now when there's salt in the ice, it moves up. The, uh, the, it, it effectively scatters from a higher position. Um, if, the, if there's a lot of salt in the snow, then it'll only move it up a small amount. If there's a large amount of, of salt in the snow, it moves it up higher, so if the snow is actually cold, and it generally won't be as salty, um, and uh, the measurement won't be offset as much, but if the, the snow is warm and melted in somewhat, there's a lot of water molecules mixed in with the ice, those reflect uh, microwaves as well, and if there's a salt, it changes the properties of the material, okay, so the air is larger. So, these, so, so basically all of these measurements were actually made out on the ocean using other devices and then calibrating them or, or then comparing them to the satellite measurements. And what, it was, what was discovered was that for 0 0.95 meter ice multiplied by 3.3 .3 to get feet. Okay, so this is about uh, 3.3 one feet or so. For this ice, okay, the measurement, the satellite measurement is wrong by 11%. It's 11% too high. The thicknesses that have been, this, this device has been operating for 10 years 
and uh, we rely on these thickness measurements from the cryostat to calculate volume measurement. And for 0.95 meter ice, this is in the late winter. Uh, late winter, like April, May. Okay, so for this time, so it drops 11%. Now, if the if the uh, ocean is only 0. Point, or if the ice is only 0. 0.7 meters thick, that's about 2. Point, multiplied by 3.3. .3, that's about 2.3 or so feet. It's a, we need to lower 25%. Okay, because the salt wicks up and it's the highest concentration right near the interface, when the snow is thinner, when the ice is thinner, the snow is thinner, well, when the ice is thinner, right, the relative error is much larger. So it's 25% and 11% here. So these are huge numbers. The ice is a lot thinner than we think, and it's because of the salt layer on the surface. Okay, this is my, uh, this is my timer, by the way, because I try to keep these videos to 15 minutes. I know, you know, everybody tells me, yeah, you can make them longer, but, you know, I, 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 I like to do chunks of videos. You know, people don't want really long videos. Whoops, wrong way, sorry. Okay, and you know, this, this uh, rope here, this noose, maybe it symbolizes the squeezing out of the life of the Arctic sea ice. You know, we're heading rapidly to a blue ocean event. Those models, uh, you know, that rely on the larger thickness measurements, they need to all be recalculated. They say 2040 to 2050, before all the sea ice goes for the first time in the summer. Peter Wadham says 2020 or earlier, I say 2020 or earlier, you know, it depends a bit on weather pattern. You know, this makes it more likely to go sooner than later. And of course, when the ice goes, it lowers the, the Arctic is a much darker place. It absorbs more solar energy in the winters. That causes greatly increased warming. We get Arctic temperature amplification that, that lowers the temperature gradient to the equator. Uh, causes the jet streams to slow down and become wavier and become persistent and it leads therefore to extreme weather events. Increases in the frequency of them, they happen more often. Increases in the severity of them, they're much more powerful. And increases in the duration of them, they last much longer. So for, for, and so for example, a massive rainstorm is moving slower because the jet streams are moving slower. It parks over one place and we get torrential rains leading to floods. You know, hurricanes we've seen being uh, slowed down. Look at Harvey stalling over Texas, for example. Um, so the Arctic, what happens in the Arctic doesn't stay in the Arctic, okay? It's not like Las Vegas. This is my, a, a quote. I should have trademarked that quote from many, many years ago. Okay, so, so what are the implications? So anything... You know, I'll draw a larger scale diagram. So this is your ice cake. You know, it's got a certain thickness of uh, T, right? The water level is here. Okay, this is about 90% roughly. This is about 10%. This is the freeboard. Okay, and then we've got a snow layer. I'll exaggerate the length of the snow layer on top. Okay, and then we've got uh, water here. We've got salt, basically. And the salt concentration is large here and it tapers off up here. The amount of salt affects the measurement. So those measurements that were discussed in the paper were from late winter or, okay, so the ice, um, the, 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 so we're coming out of the winter, okay, so we haven't had a lot of melting of the surface and, um, there was a scatter of measurements, um, and the middle of the numbers were, you know, that 11% and that 25%. Basically, the, the measurements were thrown off 0.07 meters due to the salt in the ice, the brine. This is 7 centimeters, which is just, just under, uh, you know, it's about, what, 2.8 inches or something? Just under 3 inches? Three inches would be 7.5 centimeters, okay? So when the ice is thicker, is thicker, 
this ratio is smaller, okay, so the percentage error is lower, and when the ice is thinner, the percentage error is higher. Now, when we talk about sea ice concentration, 100% concentration is where it's all, first, all ice. First of all, we've lost most of the multi-year ice in the Arctic. It's mostly all first-year ice, so this is very relevant to the situation now. Um, it would have been less so when we had much more multi-year ice in the Arctic. Okay, so now, um, and because the ice forms quickly, it ejects the brine, the brine goes into the snow, the snow wicks up. Okay, now we have a problem when there's wave act. Anything that deposits salt on the surface here is going to cause problems. Okay, so these measurements were in late winter. Okay, what about as we proceed through the summer and we get more and more melt of the ice and then we go to the uh, you know, warm conditions where there's a lot more the, the salt, the, the snow layer compacts, right? The density of the snow increases, okay? It becomes wet snow. The brine is, is, is uh, more, more the, the brine concentration therefore is larger unless the brine runs off the surface of the ice. Maybe the water carries some of it across. Um, but the, uh, the nature of the correction factor will vary through the melt season. Also, we get, as we get less and less sea ice, okay, we're not at 100% concentration in most areas for the, for the uh, first year ice. Okay, so we counted as first year ice at even 15% concentration in the extent numbers. Okay, so the extent numbers, the area numbers are where it's 100%, you know, ice. Now waves can get underneath, propagate far into the ice, Large ocean waves, because the fetch is larger, there's more winds over, over longer expanse of ocean, there's much less sea ice. Those waves can get under, they can jostle the ice up and down, and we're going to get seawater slopping over the top, even very, very far inside the ice. Of course, near the edge of the ice, they're always exposed to wave action. The, uh, we might have only 15% ice in the area, you know, so here's the sea, we only have ice you know, covering 15% of the area, it's included. You know, the waves are going to be all over this thing, right? The waves are going to cover this thing, and it will, it will freeze onto the surface, and those numbers will have much more error um, than, than do these numbers. So when we take all of those sicknesses and add them up um, to get to the area, to get the volume, the volume is going to be way down. So this is very, very bad news. Um, what it means is, when the ice starts to refreeze in the fall, you know, the minimum is reached about September 15th, then it starts to refreeze, and as it starts to refreeze, okay, we're still getting lots of wave action and stuff, so those numbers will be way off for a lot of the ice, so you know, it, 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 these, I mean, we, nobody's really looked at salinity as a correction factor. I mean, we've got the, we measure the freeboard with the microwave, it's like the microwave's uh, same frequencies in your microwave oven. You know, the water, uh, any water, you know, it, food, food is heated up in a microwave because there's water in the food and the water molecules are spun around by the wavelength of microwaves. Okay, so here we have the same, so when there's more water in this snow, then that has higher absorption in the microwaves, they don't penetrate as far, the main reflection will be much above the ice um, snow interface, and the salt adds, you know, basically salt, it makes the absorption of microwaves much larger. So the microwaves don't penetrate as far, they're reflected more, the main signal gives you a larger reading for freeboard, therefore a larger thickness. So this is a real problem and it hasn't been looked at. So what it means is, um, you know, just for from this particular study for late winter, we had a seven centimeter correction, which turns out to be 11% error for about three foot ice. And uh, for two foot ice, about a 25% error. You know, when you sum all of these errors up, the volume number, it, is going to be off by, you know, somewhere in this range, like 11 to 25%, which is, which is huge. So the ice is going, 